With a magical way of capturing your attention and drawing you into the world of Fairhaven, Wildflowers lets you live the best of both worlds. No, not that one. You juggle between being a farmer by day and a witch by night and you'll find yourself in the loop of just one more day and I'll stop playing. You know those play sessions? This is definitely that. Y'all have asked me so many times if I've played Wildflowers and the answer is no. The game released on the Nintendo Switch just as I was packing my bags and getting ready to move to the UK and then I was juggling so many things right at the same time, there was just no way that I can cover it. Recently though, Studio Dry Dog, the creators behind Wildflowers, asked me, hey Bubbles, do you want to have a sponsored video where you get to play Wildflowers and talk about it? And I said, you know what? It's about time. Heck yes, we're gonna do this. And the funny thing is, I had no idea what I was signing up for. This game packs so much more than just cute graphics and farming some elements, and it's quickly becoming a 10 out of 10 farming game for me. I played for 24 hours so far, and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Hello, you gorgeous human being. It's Miss Bubbles. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I will break down everything you need to know to decide if Wildflowers is the game for you and share some beginner tips that will come in handy if you decide to play it after all. Push the like button so we can smack the algorithm right in the face and consider subscribing if you're interested in RPG and cozy gaming content. Let's begin with the story which welcomes you to Fairhaven. This is an island far away from the city and you arrive as Terra. So you are a predetermined protag who was left by her fiance fired from her job and her life in the city was falling apart. Gotta love it when life throws at you a thousand disasters right at the same time and this game is just about that. Without spoiling things, your grandma Hazel invited you to come over as she's getting sick and you quickly learn about the family story. Tara's father had a fallout with Hazel and that's why Tara just never got the chance to visit Fairhaven that much. You also quickly learn that Hazel is a witch and part of a coven and surprise surprise, Tara also displays magical abilities so you begin your journey to help her become a witch as well. For the story section, I'm intentionally keeping things as vague as possible because I want you to experience the story of Hazel, of Terra, of Fairhaven, and everybody by yourself. There are a few instances where you can choose what to say from three different options, but I'm not sure how impactful these choices are at the end of the story. All I'll say is that you're up to some magical and witchy time with lots of twists and turns. But keep in mind that even though this game is mainly cozy, it touches on more heavy subjects such as cancer, depression, immigration, feeling left out, so definitely be aware of that. This is countered by plenty of other joyful and fun moments. Regardless, I just let you know how things are so you're not taken by surprise. Moving to the gameplay itself, there is so much to talk about here and it all ties into the story. The game is designed in a way where you can't just wander off like you would in Stardew Valley and do whatever you want. You're gonna have to complete different main quests so you can unlock new gameplay features and and slowly progress. The first thing you'll notice is the stamina meter and when you start you'll realize how quickly it drops. However, as you play more you'll expand your stamina and learn different recipes to regain it throughout the day. I also want to let you know that you can change the game speed between three levels. So in case you usually struggle with how time passes by in farming games, I will assure you you can tailor this to your own liking. When you start your journey you learn how to farm which is fairly simple. You have your seasonal crops which you can buy from Lena at the general store then all you have to do is plant the seeds, water them daily, unless it's raining then you don't have to, and then wait for them to grow. And similar to other farming games, each crop is gonna have a specific amount of days that it needs to grow. Eventually you'll also get ranch animals that look absolutely adorable and they require proper care to give you resources in return like milk and eggs. But you can also sell them. Here's the thing though, and I've mentioned it in another video, I am terrible at selling my animals. I just get too attached to my virtual pets and I refuse to tell them. Let me know if you feel the same. Moving to other gameplay mechanics, you will unlock fishing, which is very easy to do with a fun twist. All you need is bait, throwing the line, and reeling in the fish. You can also choose what kind of fish you want to catch by using the right body of water, season, time, and seeing the shadow of which one is biting your line. You'll also unlock the mines, which has a similar system to that in Stardew Valley. There are different floors, each with their unique resources, and you'll need to break different rocks to find a key and progress 
progress to the next level. And the mind is gonna be crucial and a part of your daily routine if you want to make the game a little bit easier for yourself. Your tools are pretty weak in the beginning and they require you to hit something many times and that will eat up your stamina very quickly. Eventually, you can bring the materials that you gather in the mines to Natalia the blacksmith and she will upgrade your tools for you. You're also going to find yourself forging a lot as well as chopping wood. And I appreciate that one, you don't have to worry about switching out your tools. The game will automatically equip whatever you need to use. And also, number two, you do not have to worry about your inventory. You just have endless inventory and I love it. Gathering resources is gonna be part of your daily routine also because Wildflowers has plenty of desks and crafting tables with lots of things to craft. You can also visit Parker to help you expand your farm and build different facilities, all of which will take up a lot of money and a lot of resources. And of course, we can't talk about the gameplay without mentioning the most important aspect, which is magic. The game starts introducing magic mechanics slowly, with only a couple of potions and incantations to start with. But the more quests you complete for the coven, the more you'll unlock. There are potions that cut down the wait time for your crops to harvest, others to give you extra yield, then you have incantations that will make you run faster for a few days, and some that will make you more charming, just to name a few. Similar to stamina, you also have a magic meter that will run out, so you'll need to make offers to the Wellspring Cauldron until you learn of other ways to refill it. And if you're wondering, yes, there is romance. You have seven bachelors and bachelorettes, and you can choose whoever you want to romance. They're all very unique, and they have their own story. And just like other townsfolk, you can develop your relationship by talking to them and gifting them their favorite present, which is usually food. Let me know if you played the game, who did you choose to romance, or if you're gonna play it, who will you choose? For me, I still have no idea who I'm gonna go with. Oh, and there's also a cat which you can pet and is so cute to interact with. Both the game's story and gameplay mechanics are gonna feel a little bit slow paced to unlock and progress through. It feels a lot like my time at Portia and my time at Sandrock, where you also can expect to grind a lot, so definitely keep that in mind if it usually bothers you or steers you away from a farming or cozy game. Now that we've talked about a lot of the good as well as the different gameplay mechanics and story mode, there is something that you have to know and keep in mind and it might bother you because it is something that usually bothers me. If you've watched my recent video from this week, which is the 10 farming games that I regret buying, one of the trends that you would notice is that I really don't like trigger systems and yes, Wildflowers has a lot of them when you're trying to develop your friendship with the townsfolk. So Wildflower's relationships go on a level basis. Once you reach a cap, you're gonna have to trigger an event so you can reach the next one. So for example, if you are an acquaintance, you will need to trigger something so you can become a casual friend. Some of these are very easy to trigger, like you just simply have to visit the character in their shop, but others are a little bit more complex and they're gonna require specific dates, times, and even locations. So you might find yourself using the wiki. However, I'm glad that the trigger system is not taken to the extreme as it is in Doraemon Story of Seasons or Rune Factory 4 and that made it a lot more manageable and acceptable for my gameplay style. In the presentation department, I wanted to have a special section for the world of Fairhaven because I really believe that it deserves a spotlight. While the map is not massive when compared to that in Coral Island or my time at Sandrock, it feels compact yet complex enough. The town center is where you'll be spending a lot of your time and you'll find different stores you need like the flower shop, general store, jewelry store, restaurant, the mayor's office, school and more and this is where you'll meet most of the townsfolk and you'll see them either working or chilling and you can get to know them better. But what I like the most is that the different areas have their own feel to them. From the mysterious forest that the folk of Fairhaven prefer not to enter, to the beach where you'll find many hanging out in, moving to the mountains, and even the other areas that you'll slowly unlock but I cannot mention because they are massive spoilers, you're gonna find a lot of unique environments. The graphics look cute, but they're not groundbreaking. Animations are well done, cutscenes add to the immersion factor, and I appreciate how minimalistic the HUD is. By the way, you can also use the touch screen to play the game if you want to. There are also plenty of achievements even when playing on the Nintendo Switch, something that I'm always happy to see added in. As for the sound, the game is fully voice acted and I was impressed by how well these performances were. You can tell by the character's tone how they're feeling and it just adds to how much you connect with everyone and again how immersed you're gonna be in this experience. I thought that was you. What with this being a, a bakery and all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at it go. 
And I was also surprised by the amount of lines that have been recorded for this game. It took me forever to even get Damon to repeat one line. This is what I was talking about when I covered Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life Remake. Of course, it's an older game, it's not fair to compare it to this one. In general, no matter what farming game I'm playing, I don't want to be seeing the same three lines repeated over and over again until a miraculous cutscene happens. Wildflowers has an abundance of dialogue which will keep you on your toes and will keep things new and fresh. And I feel like that is such a crucial part when you're playing a game that is very community based and the whole point of the story is to get to know the different townsfolk of the island that you're moving to. The sound effects are also well done, you'll hear birds chirping during the day, the relaxing sound of rain, the wind blowing, and you'll also have catchy sound effects when you forge or create a new recipe. Music was whimsical, it took me so many times to get that word right, and it changed and felt a bit more ominous when the story took a darker turn. I did not find myself turning it down, and you'll find that it occasionally just stops completely just to let you take in the other surrounding sound effects. The performance section is going to be very short and sweet because there's really not much to talk about here. The game runs smoothly in docked and handheld mode. The only time I noticed slight stuttering was when it was raining a couple of times. Otherwise, I had no issues or bugs at all. So we talked a lot about the good and the bad, but the question is, is Wildflowers the game for you? We're gonna go as usual, this game is for you if, not for you if, and my personal verdict, so you can decide if you're gonna enjoy it based on your gameplay style. Wildflowers is for you if you've been craving a story-driven farming game that is not afraid to tackle some real-life issues while still provoking joyful feelings throughout its gameplay and story. It's also for you if you love the gameplay loops of farming games in general, taking care of your farm, your barn animals, fishing, mining, etc. It's also for you if you'd like the added gameplay feature of playing around with magic. Wildflowers is for you if you like to interact with villagers rather than spend your time alone on your farm. It's also for you if you're looking for a farming game that lets you cater your experience to your liking, even through choosing the speed at which time progresses daily. However, Wildflowers is not the one for you if... You hate spending time with villagers and would rather stay on your farm and not engage with anyone. It's not for you if you hate grinding, cause some of the items you need for the quest will take a long time to make. It's also not for you if you cannot tolerate heavy subjects in your cozy games and would rather have a straight up bubbly story with no sadness at all. As for me, this is the cozy game that I did not know I needed. It came in at the perfect time. I've moved to a new country a year ago, last month I decided I'm quitting my PhD and I'm gonna change my my entire career and move towards something that is more fulfilling. So getting to know Tara and seeing how she is growing and changing, she just felt so relatable to me. She is going through so much in her life and it's interesting to see her journey unfold. The gameplay is also very fun and this became a part of my nighttime routine. By slowly unlocking new gameplay features and mechanics, you just don't get bored and there's always something new to look forward to. I love the slow pacing of the story, usually I'm just more like antsy and need more action, but I just needed something calm and learning about such unique characters with their own quirks and flaws was very fun to do. I also usually get very bored with villagers very quickly and you can see a trend in my recent farming games where I have just been let down and disappointed because just the community feels so boring and I'm not saying this because this is sponsored. In the end, Studio Dry Dock did not tell me to say anything, so this is my own opinion. As always, this game is just so engaging. It's literally what I've been asking for when I say I want a community that does not feel like cabbages. I cannot recommend Wildflowers enough. It is such an awesome cozy game and I'm so happy that I finally got the chance to try it. Now let's dive into 14 tips that I wish I knew when I first started and maybe it will help you out with your journey in Fairhaven. Number one, talk to everyone daily. There is plenty of dialogue and this will help you increase your friendship with them. Number two, while you're at it, learn their favorite gifts and make sure to give them that. Number three, always use all of your stamina before going to bed to just be a little bit more efficient. Number four, stock up on wood. You're gonna need lots of it. Number five, remember the cat that I told you about? Pet and feed it every day if you want to adopt it. And two of its favorite gifts are milk and tuna. Number six, enter different buildings at different times when a friendship level has been maxed out so you can trigger events. If nothing works, then it's time to pull up that wiki. Number seven, see 
seasons are not dated like other farming games. Here, you, Terra, are the one who's gonna change the season. So make sure to do that to progress the story, but also, before you do so, make sure to harvest all your crops first. Number eight, when you fish, sometimes a bottle will pop up. Make sure to get it because it has recipes that you cannot find otherwise. Number nine, from day one, get at least three compost bins and start making soil. Trust me, you're gonna need a lot of them for one of the main quests in the story and you're gonna wish you started making them sooner. Number 10, upgrade your tools ASAP. This is gonna save you so much time, so make it your priority. Number 11, fish sticks are your best friend to making money. Buy flour from Lena and tuna from Bruno, go home, make fish sticks, and then sell them to Sophia at the restaurant. You will make so much money this way, but if you feel like it's a cheat, there is a setting option where you can toggle that off. Number 12, focus on the main quest, otherwise you will not unlock new gameplay mechanics, areas, and more romanceable folks. Number 13, the game saves all the time, so don't worry about it, that's why there is no save option, you don't have to worry about that. I love that this option was added in this game. Number 14, there is a notice board next to the mayor's office, and people will ask for different resources and pay you for it. If you don't want to complete a certain request, you can actually remove it so a new one generates in its place. But in Enough about me and my experience with wildflowers. Have you played it? Did you actually wishlist it and have been waiting for a sign to buy it? Let's talk about it in the comment section. I do my best to reply to everyone and my favorite part of making videos is actually interacting with you guys. Thank you again Studio Dry Dog for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and a special shout out to my patron and YouTube bubblies who go out of their way every month to support what I do here. And of course, as always, thank you to The Game Dimension, Stephanie, Jacob, Steven, Dark One, and Jake Logan for going the extra mile. Until next time, stay bubbly.